All right, uh, thank you, Pedro, for the introduction. Um, all right, let's go into the business analyst role as a giant billion in legacy projects. As he said, I'm business analyst and currently also product owner in IBM. I've been leading these roles for almost three years now, so let's go ahead into this. What will we be talking about during these few minutes? A little bit about the business analyst role, the legacy projects itself, uh, the agile methodologies uh, about business analysts using agile, the legacy projects uh, plus the business analyst role, and we will be concluding uh, with why am I a villain? So first of all, the business analyst role. I will be giving just an overview of the business analyst and agile, but if you're interested, I can give you some documentation after the talk via Slack. So um, we have the business analyst role as the bridge between the customer and the development team. What this means that this role um, preferably needs to be a technical person and also needs to understand what the customer needs. With this, we have best of both worlds as when the customer has the requirements, the business analyst will have the knowledge to translate that into the epics, the stories, or, and the requirements itself for a better understanding for the development team. So he needs to be very clever and documented on the tools and techniques he uses for this role. So that way, the business analyst can provide the best solution on, or how will be the best solution so the development team can understand that and perform their roles during and after that. Um, now, moving into the legacy projects, and this is something that when I started performing my role as business analyst and when I started working in these kind of projects, drive me kind of, kind of problems to understand what this meant. But in a personal uh, personal comments, I can say that the legacy projects are all but meaningful projects for, let's say, the product, the the customer or the company itself. But in this case, the old is a relative term because this will depend on the technologies that were used to create these projects, these these tools, these applications. Why? Because there's always some kind of technology that probably today is really meaningful. It's everyone is talking about it. All the companies are trying to implement it. But in a couple of years, in five years, the companies, the communities, or the people that is taking care of those probably is not doing it anymore. Stop giving some support to those tools. And eventually this gets old or stop being secure for, for the information and many, many other things. So these became the legacy projects, the legacy tools, the legacy applications. And also an important topic for this talk is that originally probably these projects were delivered using another kind of methodologies like the waterfall ones, uh, using ETL or CMA best practices. And this is something that drives us to the agile methodologies that some, somewhere in time, the companies or, or the groups of people that drive these projects stop using Waterfall and start using Agile or start implementing the Agile practices. And I'm going to start giving an overview or what Agile is, introducing like the well-defined team that is supposed to have that comes with the product owner, a scrum master, the team manager, and the team members. So with this, Agile drives with the purposes to so instead of give uh, only one product to deploy one solution at a time, I just suggest to produce a small MVPs, minimal valuable products, to the customer releases that will have um, a really value for the client when they start using it. This will be delivered using a small amount of time divided by sprints or iterations. So in here, this is something that where I, when I started like marketing this, this talk, drive me kind of, kind of problems in my mind that for me, the product owner 
is not part of the team. The product owner for me is who is giving me the requirements, who is giving me what the development team needs, needs to provide to the client, what needs to be delivered. So for me, the well-defined team should be a business analyst, a scrum master or an iteration manager, a team manager and the team members or development team. With this, the agile team can, can have a, a real person who is taking care of the requirements, understanding what the client needs, what the client wants, and to provide that solution to the development team. So with this, the business analyst has control on both worlds and can provide a better solution to the customer and to the development team to know what they have to do. So here's something the, that the business analyst will have some hard time with. The, uh, the adaptation of the waterfall into Agile. Because um, the business analyst will need, if, if it's the case, to use the, what, what Waterfall used to present into what Agile needs to provide. So with this, the business analyst faces with a big, big wall that is to adapt what used to be the project into what will need to be a, the project. So these kind of problems, I, I reduce it into five important points. That is the change of methodology, of course, the most important thing, because Agile provides many things, but uh, deletes many others. Another important point is that probably the stakeholders, the experts on the on the client side are gone anymore, and probably they just support the the application because the application needs to be re, still running, still will have new requirements, but probably the original people that better understood what the problem is when this was requested is not in, in, in there anymore. And also happens the same with the solution team. So probably during the years, and let's talk that the legacy project um, was deployed five, 10 years ago, so probably the solution team is not the same anymore. Probably the development team, the architect or the manager is, is gone. So the, the same understanding of the project, of the goal, is, it's not, the, it's not under, the same understanding anymore. And here is something else that comes with the old methodologies that some projects still have, that is the project manager. The project manager with an agile team um, really takes much time than it's than it's supposed to. Why? Because the business analyst has, has understanding on both worlds, as I said, the business and the tech side. The program manager usually, on most part of the times, and we will not say the hundred percent of the times, just know about the business side or how to drive a project, but doesn't understand the technological side of the problem of the project. So this is kind of a stopper for the business analyst. And another important point is the budget. The budget during the years, probably the customer still needs application, of course, but for new requirements, he doesn't have enough budget to, to support this, but probably we have many requirements and we will need to, to talk with the client and understand perfectly where, where are the the most important ones. So then, why am I a villain on all this story? Well, the business analyst will face a big, big, um, well, many, many blockers during the um, during this period of adapt the workflow into agile. If it's if it's not, but if it's already an agile project, he will face another problems because the project usually are enormous, so hard to understand, and Agile takes too much time to implement and change that paradigm. So uh, one thing that will be useful for the business analyst is that the older methodologies just have a lot of documentation. So the business analyst is an Agile billion because he will need to use help from another methodologies and not just Agile. And in some moments probably he will need to uh, to ignore completely agile or use just few of those tools to implement the solution the new requirements or to migrate itself the, the product if it's needed but 
not just use Agile makes Abyssal is the billion because he will need to require some assistance from another from another um, uh, frameworks. Probably he will use design thinking or something from CMI, from Scrum, from Scrum, from Prims, from XP. So in conclusion, I can say that the business analyst role is way complicated than the other ones because he needs to adapt many tools and techniques beyond what probably the iteration manager or scrum master will tell him to do. And I close the, the call, the talk with that. Thank you all for the opportunity. And if you have questions, please send me by Slack. I have some documentation I could share with you. I will share the the bibliography with you, with the presentations. So thank you all for being here. And you can send me questions by LinkedIn or Twitter or Slack as you wish. Thank you.